I present to you Lockdown Deck. <laughs> I haven't really done a video like this before. I don't know how much different I look, but, you know, unprecedented times. So we got a, a very exciting piece of news uh, revealed to us yesterday, or more specifically last night. And this news is something that is very, very exciting for me personally, and I'm sure many of you out there as well. Uh, we finally have an announcement on a new Transformers film coming from Hasbro and Paramount. And in this case, it's going to be a Transformers animated prequel film. And this is coming from Deadline, and they're saying that we have a director, and we also have a basic plot premise for kind of what the movie is going to be focusing on and what is really exciting is that they have said that this film is intended for a theatrical release so let's just dive into the details so first of all let's talk about the concept alone a transformers animated prequel is very exciting and this is something that has been in the works for a while we've kind of known about this for a couple of years uh, even before the release of bumblebee back in 2018 we kind of knew about this film uh, originally it was going to be titled transformers one i don't know if they're changing that up or anything which is funny, it kind of reminds me of the Battlefield video game series. They released the prequel and they were called Battlefield 1. It kind of like Transformers 1. But it was going to be a Cybertron-based prequel and it was going to be animated. It was called Transformers 1. Um, so we have known about this for a while and I'm assuming this is that same project as it seems to have a similar concept and a similar basis as, a we as well as uh, because this is meant to be focusing on Cybertron. It's going to be set on Cybertron. So again, it seems to be very similar. Um, so the idea of a Transformers animated prequel set on Cybertron is something that I'm very, very excited about. I am a gigantic Transformers fan. I adore Transformers and I even love the Transformers movie series. I know they're terrible. I get they're terrible. If you hate them, I completely get it. I completely understand. I just adore them. I love all five of them and I adore Bumblebee as well, which I genuinely thought was a pretty damn good movie. Uh, but the Transformers films, I just, I adore them. So the idea of us getting like an animated prequel, I think is a really cool idea. So this concept of a Cybertron set animated prequel, I think could work really, really well for this franchise. My question is, what kind of animation is this going to be? Is this going to be a animated style similar to the old 80s show? Or is it going to be something a bit more updated and a bit more modern uh, to kind of bring it into that modern age? Or is it going to be like a CGI fest like we had in Bumblebee? Like if you remember like the opening scene of Bumblebee, which took place on Cybertron, it was an absolutely beautiful scene. It was stunning. So much so, it brought me to tears. Within the first five minutes of Bumblebee, I was crying because of how beautiful the Cybertron scene was. Is it going to be more like that? And if this is part of the same franchise as you know, the Michael Bay movies and also Bumblebee, then maybe it'd be more in line with that. I don't know. But I think it could be really cool to see what style of animation they're going to go for, because I think the classic style of animation could be cool to bring it back. I just don't know how appealing that would be for modern audiences. And then a modern style of animation could basically separate it from the franchise that this is trying to align itself with. So I think that going with the CGI route and actually going with a CGI heavy, you know, that's basically like Lion King, going to be a completely CGI film, uh, just set on Cybertron, I think would not only look really cool and really modern, but it would also set itself very well and would make itself very much aligned with the previous Transformers films, which I think they are clearly trying to bring themselves in line with. Also, I think the CGI that would be used in Bumblebee to be used here would also just benefit the film a lot more because again it would look like it was part of the franchise and also it looks more realistic because this animation style again if they're trying to align themselves with the Transformers films we've had previously you don't want to do it animated necessarily because again it kind of makes it feel more like a cartoon whereas if you do the CGI style it looks more realistic and looks more like the characters we know and love from the Transformers films so I think that on that basis again because we don't know fully what they're trying to do with this movie like if it is trying to be a part of the same franchise because if it is you have to go down that cg route however if they are planning on doing something completely separately i guess you can change up the animation and do whatever you want uh, but in regards to the movies and stuff like that i genuinely feel like the best route you can go down is the cgi route and bumblebee showed us that they can do that very very well now the only problem with the cgi route is that that would be very very expensive very expensive and that is also an issue because the transformers movies while they were at one point these billion dollar franchise it's kind of dwindled from that i mean transformers the last night wasn't that financially successful uh and neither was bumblebee they both were kind of moderate successes i mean they still made a lot of money but in regards to the previous films like because dark of the moon was a billion dollar film so was age of extinction and i believe the last night made around 400 500 million which again was 
a far cry from what it made beforehand, and by Hollywood standards, that was pretty much a bomb. So it was kind of a risky move to make Bumblebee, and Bumblebee was made for a much smaller price, and it did make its budget back, and it was a moderate success. So if they wanted to go down the CGI route, they might be a bit scared to do that, because again, it would be expensive, and the Transformers brand name isn't exactly in the best place right now so i don't know if they'd want to fully put their confidence within that and that's the only issue that comes with doing a fully cgi transformers film now moving away from all that we do have the director confirmed which is josh cooley uh josh cooley directed toy story 4 so we have an oscar winner on our hands here now i don't necessarily agree with the oscar win uh, i didn't think toy story 4 was that good i thought it was okay at best um I thought it was a pretty lower tier Pixar movie, but I mean, for me, Toy Story 4, like, I just didn't really care for it. I think it went for too much, and it was too different from the other films, and I just didn't really feel like it delivered that much. I mean, you can check out my review for my full thoughts. I did a very in-depth review for Toy Story 4 about why I felt like it didn't live up to the franchise, but for me, bringing Josh Cooley onto this project, I mean, the direction, it could be good, but it also it might be bad because like, again a lot of people really like toy story 4 most people do a lot of people you know when toy story 4 came out it got glistening reviews it was very well received it's just me personally i was in the minority group who didn't really like toy story 4 um so for me josh cooley directing toy story 4 it, uh, or directing this transformers film isn't really that exciting for some people it might be you know getting a toy story director to do this could be a fantastic idea and again he could step up a lot here and really bring his bring it into his own but for me personally it does worry me a little bit given the fact that i felt toy story 4 was a very forced attempt at making a fourth film in the franchise and i just didn't care for it i didn't really feel like it added anything and i felt like it just didn't really do much for the franchise. I mean, yeah, I did enjoy some aspects of it, and I did re-watch it actually fairly recently, and I didn't really dislike it as much as I did last time, but I just don't really feel like the movie does much. Like, if you took it away from the franchise, it's fine. Toy Story 3 is still a great ending for the series, and while I do like the ending of Toy Story 4 quite a bit, especially with Woody's arc, it just, again, it, it's not necessary, it's not needed, and if you just would have left it at Toy Story 3, the world would still have kept spinning. So him doing this Transformers film, it doesn't really excite me all that much. Now, the story is going to be revolving around the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron. So this is going to be them establishing their relationship, probably as brothers initially, and then how they turn into the Autobots and then the Decepticons, and then eventually, you know, end up living in a war. Um, that is a very smart idea to do, especially, again, if they are going to link this into the original films, it would be really cool to actually see that relationship initially, because they are so you know, they have such a hatred for each other by the time you get to that first film. It would be nice to see them actually in a different state of mind back on Cybertron before the war kicked off. Like, that would be really fun for me to actually see Optimus Prime and Megatron as brothers interacting, maybe even fighting side by side would be really nice. And then seeing how the split happens and then how the Autobots became the Autobots and the Decepticons became the Decepticons and how that war between them started and how they became arch enemies. That would be a really cool story to do in this film. And again, it just adds so much layers like and so much more depth to these films and this relationship. So when we see them meet up for the first time in the Transformers first film, we just understand it we get it and then every time megatron returns and every time he shows up we can see what journey he's had and where he's come from i just think it adds so much to this franchise if they want to bring that relationship back to the basics and we can see it from the beginning i just think it does so much for the movie and so much for the characters and i can't wait to see where they go with that and also you could see other characters as well we could see how he met bumblebee we could see how that comes in basically what i'm thinking is if you've ever played transformers war for cybertron on the ps3 and the xbox 360 if you ever played that game take a lot of those ideas and bring it into here like how he met bumblebee how optimus became a prime all those kind of ideas bring them into this and also war for cybertron was officially classed as canon by hasbro themselves so that was clearly going down the right direction so if you take those ideas and put it on the big screen i think you've got the right idea there and this film is going to be penned by the same writers who wrote ant-man and the wasp which yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I like Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's all right. I do think it is definitely in like the bottom three as regards to like the worst Marvel movies. Um, I don't love it or anything. I think it's okay. I don't particularly enjoy it. I, I kind of, even when I came out of it, I was like, 
yeah, like whatever. The Ant-Man movies aren't really my favorite. Like for me, I much prefer Ant-Man as a ensemble character. I think he's much better in either when you look at him in Captain America Civil War or Endgame. I think he's much better in those ensemble films. His own films, I don't really think work that well. And I think the films haven't really done a good job from a writing perspective of proving him as a lead character. Uh, even though Paul Rudd is great as Scott Lang, I just don't think that he is particularly well suited for those, like, those kind of films. We'll see how Ant-Man 3 does, but Ant-Man and the Wasp in particular, even though I, I liked the first Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp just, pff, yeah, went straight down. So for me, I'm not, again, like the director thing, I'm not super confident, but... I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt. Again, this is a new project, so I'm excited to see what they do with it. And again, as a Transformers fan, I'm hyped. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it. So for me, yeah, the talent behind this film is a bit shaky. Again, I'm not scared or anything. It's not bad news, but it's just something that for me personally, I'm not super excited about. Like, it's not something that gets my gears grinding. It's not anything that gets me really hyped. I'm just like, it could be better, but whatever i'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt here uh, but the idea alone a transformers animated prequel potentially set in the same universe as the michael bay verse uh, gets me very very hyped and as a transformers fan this is something i've always wanted to see so i'm very excited to see this but what do you guys think make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comments down below are you excited for this transformers animated prequel or would you rather just see the franchise die in burn whatever you think about it let me know in the comments down below and if you want to see more movie news and movie related videos just like this one be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads from me and hope to see you guys again next time